Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to another edition of Financing Your Business. Today, I'm Tim Jacquet, your host. Today is a special occasion. We're talking about the Jacquet family. And on the line, I have guest historian, Russell Jacquet. He's on online. And he'll talk about the sons and daughters of Jean Bestet Jacquet and his book. And we invite you people to call in. The dial-in to the conference is 347-324-3460. Again, it's 347 347- 324-3460. If you call in, if you have a question, all we ask you to do is dial number one, and we know you have a question. Other than that, we assume that you're listening. Also, the chat room is open on Blog Talk Radio. You can pose your question in the chat room, and I'll read it on air. Yes, Russell, you still there? Yep. Okay, well, welcome to the program. And mainly, kind of tell us about yourself and what inspired you to write this book. Well, good afternoon, cousin Timothy and Bob. This is Russell Jacquet from uh, Seattle, Washington, and I wrote a book. It was in two parts, volume one and volume two. The first volume I got out, published around the year 2000, and then uh, it was such a big family to write about. I just decided I would print volume one and continue working on volume two, which took care of the rest of the family. It's about the story of Jean Baptiste, who was born in 18, the year 1808 in St. Martinsville, Louisiana. And basically, all of the people in this country who are of color, whether they call themselves Negro, Black, African American, who are related to a Jack somewhere in their lungs, they are all related. And I have a big scroll, it's a five foot long scroll, where if someone, you know, says, Hey, I'm a Jack Cat, I'm I can pull up my scroll and they can tell me, and I can say, oh, yeah, you're related to this part of the tree. I got interested in it. I just happened to walk into a family reunion my sister was holding in Los Angeles. I was going to school in Montana, working on my master's degree. And in 1989, I just decided to drive down during the break, and he was hosting a family reunion. And I was like, oh. Wait, what is this the reunion? So people started telling me and talking about the uh, Jacquette family and the related family. And I was really intrigued about the family history. But the funny thing about it, or the strange thing, I guess, is that everybody here, they could go back to the time, which was about in the late 1880s, and then everybody sort of hit a wall. No one knew anything beyond that. And I was like... I was just flabbergasted. Wow, this is a family reunion and nobody can go back to past like 88. So that got me on the course to be writing down notes what people would tell me. And then I would go to family future like years later and people would ask me, oh, what did you find out? What did you find out about this family? And I'd pull out my handwritten notes and try to flip through to find what they were asking me for. And then I decided, you know what, I should copy Tyson up because this is important stuff this is about our family history. So that's how the book came about. I started typing my notes. I interviewed thousands of people, I guess. I made a trip to Louisiana like every year between 1990 and 2005. The roots of the Jackson come from a Frenchman's name was Francois Yaxis. Jacquet, that's how you would say his name is Fred. In English, we would say Francois Hyacinth Jacquet. And he was a French military man who was born about the year 1754. And what he did was he was a military command of some sort on a ship. And from what I can do, he deserted the French military during the French Revolution and came up with 
former military friend of his named Jean Baptiste Barad, who owned 37 slaves. One of them was a woman named Rosine. She was about seven years old from what I have to do that she was born in 1790. And they had a child, a Mulatto child, which she had. And there's a lot of proof that she definitely pretty much no doubt about it. And that she had, like I said, 13 kids, sons and daughters. And there's two more that are probably his, but it could be one of his sons. He also had a son that he named Jean-Baptiste Jacquette, who is my great-grandfather, Jean-Baptiste Jacquette. Now, he also went by the same name. So the birth certificate of the kids is because the father was Jean-Baptiste Jacquette, and the question is, okay, which one fathered them? Was the father, son, that is uh, still a really big question that genealogists like myself want to know. So of all of these 13 to 15 sons and daughters that he desired, that was the title of the book, The Sons and Daughters of Combat Teachers. And I am in order of their book. So, Box 1 has the first two kids, which I'm going to have to look at the little map I had. The first one was born, was, he was born around 1826. Then, Belazir Jacquette, he was born in 1831. Jacquette born in 18. 18- 32, and Archie Jacquette born in 1834, and that's, that's how the rest of the kids are, are in the book, and then all of their children, and as many as I can get, the children up until this day. And I'm still getting information from family members to tell me, hey, I'd like to be included, so I'm the door of the book, and please add us in. So whenever I get a revised edition, of Volume 2, there will be a lot more people in the, in the Volume 2, two book. So okay. That's how it did. And, of course, on the, my dad's side, we have Africa, we have French roots, of course, and we also have, on my side of the family, we have two Indian or Native American roots. My great-grandmother was pure-blooded, too. And the story we do about that is from oral tradition. So, Here's what I did. I went and took a DNA test. There's many DNA tests you can take. I'll talk about the two of them that I took. Okay. Ethnicity test. And you can tell how much African, how much Asian, how much European, and how much Indian that you are. And my test came back 53% African, 15% European, and 20% Native American Indian and 0% Asian. So that's how I know, well, those stories have to be true. 20% Indian. And a lot of us are like that. Now, on the father's side, now guess what? There's this thing called a Y chromosome that is passed exclusively from the son. So when I get te- when I got tested, that half of the plan is called R1, B1, B2, A1B. And so geneticists out there who know what that means, that is purely repeated. So if a geneticist saw that, they would say, oh, this person is completely European. And I would walk into a room, and they would say, oh, well, wait a minute, maybe you made a mistake. Well, no, you didn't. And that is because my great hyphen set was European, with French, and it's a direct line in terms of the father, because my father was not a field protector, and his father was Francois So any male that kept to a direct male descendant from Francois Heisman is going to have the same Y chromosome pathogen, and they would, some people would consider them to be European. And I don't know if you heard this in that one that they had with the just thing cut and has the same pathogen, R1 B1. And everybody can say, Oh, he's European, he's totally different but I say no, he isn't regardless of what his chromosome says he is. He's just all this Egypt, his parents were Egyptian and he is no less Egyptian than I am American. I consider myself an American, not a European, I'm not African. I'm American. So that story, if people want to know a little bit more about, they can go and get a DNA test 
They can get an estimate to tell them how much Indian, Black, Christian, and Asian they are, and they can also get a Y chromosome. What part of the world it came from within the last three thousand years? Okay. Now, kind of back up for a second. I mean, talk, go all the way to the origins of of Africa and Europe itself. Now, is he's originally is from France. Is that connection is from France to Africa, or the combination of him being in France itself, migrating here to the States, starts that particular family? Yes. When Francois Hyacinth Jacquette came to the United States, there was only one other family that had the name Jacquette that had been here, and that was a family that had came from France and landed in New Orleans on the ship called the Moutine in the year 1720. And they, that family stayed in New Orleans. They were the only Jacquette family in what was, it, it still was not the United States. Remember, this, this, we're still in Louisiana territory owned by the We purchased Louisiana until 18, what was it, 1810, I believe, the Louisiana Purchase. We're still in French territory, actually. So when Francois Heisen's Jacquette came over, he was like what I have to do, only the second Jacquette to come over here. And when he had a child with Rosie, that child was a mulatto, which means one parent was white and one parent was black. And that began the line of Jacquette, the African-American. Okay, so all African side has to have come from the mother. Okay, so we back up for a second. So, Hyacinth, was he African or was he European? He was European. He was European Anglo? Definitely, yeah. Okay. So if there was a census that was taken in 1810, he's listed on the census as a white male. And from all the records, I even went over to France and the military records, you know, they all list him as a white male. So there's no doubt about that, that he was a white male. And he married a African-American here in Louisiana? No, he did not marry Rosine. He had a child with her. Okay. She, she was one of 37 slaves that a friend, a military friend of uh, Francois had had. And she was uh, born in 17... 17- 90, and she had this child in 1808. So she was probably 17 years old when she received this child with Francois. And since he was born in circa 1954, well, he's in the city. Okay. Is any documentation on what type of relationship they had, or is this really hard to say? It's, yeah, it's really hard to say if. What was it? Was it lust? Was it rape? Was it romance? No one can say. But I don't think that there was any hard feelings that evolved from there because she always knew who his father was. And when slavery ended, slaves had to take a last name because they didn't have a last name. So 1868, when he gets married, right, it says on the... I can read some of it for you in French. I'll read it in, in English. When he got married in 1867, now he had already, this, this is Jean Baptiste Jacquette, the mulatto son of Rosine and Francois Jacquette. And it says that he had already had seven kids, and it says, We celebrate the marriage of Jean Baptiste, a freed man of the Rosemont Barat, oldest son to see Jacquette and Rosine. So right there tells you, oh, who is the deceased Jack? And like I said, there was no one else that went by that name in the early, in the first part of the hundreds, so the first three like, decades, except like that and this family in New Orleans. And from New Orleans to San Martinville is probably, oh, I think it's 70 to 80 miles wide. And he's living in the same house as, well, I can't say Rosie lived there, but it's the same house of the plantation. This is Francois I'm talking about, the Frenchman. He's living okay. in the same house, right? So, I mean, you can put, in the book, I document four key points to 
how he has to be the father. And I just named two of them. But there, there is no doubt that the father has a white father. Because his mother was black and he used to be the father. And back in those days, it made sense. There were three races. You were either white, you were either black, or you were Mula. And the Mu was what? Was that Indian? I'm sorry, say that again? Oh, you said it was three races at that time. It was Negro, white, and what was the last one? Okay, Mulatto. M-U-L-O-T-T-O. was a derogatory name that actually came from the word mule, which was like a cross breed between two different animals. But mulatto in French just means that you are 50% black and 50% white. Now, the French, remember, we're French territory here in 17 and 18 countries. Mm-hmm. We had names for people, even if you were one 32nd color or black, you were still considered colored, and they had names for those people. One, if you were one black, you were a quarter. If you were one eight, you were, uh, if you were like three eight, they had a name for all of these people. They were so the word dedicated. The dedicated how much blood you had. They be sure that they put you in a certain box to categorize. The, what impact did that categorization had on society during that time? Did it make a difference, or is it really in the sense of? judge on what you look like at that time, if you were high yellow or if you could pass as being white, was that, is it maybe a physical appearance or the, I know everybody didn't walk around that in their pocket. I guess if you can pass for it, you pass for it and that's how they got by with it? Well, it was a combination of both. If you could pass, the best thing to do was try and pass for white. I mean, because there were so many rules and laws against these people. You can't do this. You can't do that. You can't marry this. You can't own property. You can't have this job. So, I mean, if you could pass for white, the way I see history, hey, it was a matter of survival. You know what I'm saying? Now, if people knew your family history, right, if you didn't, if you weren't mobile and in in, in the last 100 or 200 years, people didn't move as much as they did today and they had to stay in the same area. So if you weren't mobile, you stayed in the same city, and people knew your family history, well, they would tell on you. Even if you had you had to be in that category. Case in point, on my on my father's side, great-grandfather, Pierre Tragan, the one who married the Indian, and their daughter was the one who married Gilbert Jackson. If you look at that picture of them, you can go on the website and see this picture is also in the book of volume two. He's like a white man. He's got the handlebar mustache and all that. Now, his mother was black and his father was a slave man. But he came out looking white. And so he was actually born in 1854. And, of course, he grew up with his black. Now, when he got sick in 1920, this is in late childhood, he went to a white hospital because back then they... He had white house hospitals, he had colored hospitals, and they took care of him for a week. And then, guess what? Children came to visit him, and they found out he was colored, so they kicked him out. But, you know, those are the things that went on. People don't realize that's the way things were 100, 200 years ago, that you, even if you look lucky, but people knew your history, that you had a colored grandfather or grandmother somewhere, you were still considered colored, and it didn't matter. You had to go to colored school. You couldn't hold certain jobs. You couldn't marry certain people. You couldn't have certain property. It was very... So you can't blame people for, quote, passing. It was a matter of survival. Okay. So on one point real quick, just a break real quick. Again, if you want to call in, you can call in at 347-324-3460, 347-324-3460. If you're calling to the conference bridge, you can dial 1 if you want to ask Russell a question. Again, that's dial 1, and that indicates we know you want to, you have a question, we'll put you on the air to ask your question. Moving forward from this, now I know there's different variations of the name Jacquet throughout the United States. So if they, if the family 
to get away from their past and they could pass for another race or they want to get in better economic conditions, they migrated north or whatever or migrated, migrate west. And if they could, they can hold, still keep their name and alter it. Is what you, we see in different variations of this particular name, even from an Hispanic nature, I've even seen a JK with a Z on it at the end without the T, a two T's at the end or E and so forth or a TS. Is that one, one of the reasons why we have this variation on one particular name? I, I haven't seen any other place. I, that's a good question. And I've met many Jacquette families who changed their name. And most of them changed it because they wanted to be different. Like in Houston, there's a lot of Jacquettes here because the first migration out of Louisiana in the 1920s and 1930s, Houston is where they went. That's where my dad's family, when they left the Cade, Lafayette, St. Martinsville area, they went to Houston, Texas, and then many families followed, and then many families went to Los Angeles after that, and families went east as well. But the name Jacquet, that's how you say it in French. You don't pronounce the T. Like many French words, you don't pronounce the Pine Hunter. There are exceptions. The name Jack, it, it means the name Jack. Now, there's other names that are similar, like the name Jacques, J-A-C-C-E-F, and that's a personal name. That means Jack or Jane. And then you have Jaco, which is J-A-C-Q-U-O-T, and that is also a personal name, Jim or Jimmy. So some of our Houston Jack characters, they added two teams to the end of the name, like J-A-C-U-E-T or J-A-C-Q-U-E-T-E-E. And some of them dropped the C from the jacket, like the New Orleans jacket folks. The name jacket, T to the E, actually means a man's tail coat or morning coat or a woman's jacket. It's like a coat or something. So these names, as far as I'm concerned, they're all related. The earliest that I found the Jacket name, because I did a lot of just in the uh, Latter-day Saints Church, the Mormon Church, Utah has the biggest library. If you ask me, it's a Bible, like the Library of Alexandria, and you can search through records all over the world here. But the earliest Jacket in the LDS Church is after the five, is a guy named Pierre Jacket, who was born in 1500. He was born in Switzerland, which is so I'm wondering if that actually the origin of the name. I don't know. Okay. We have a, okay. Yep. Go ahead. We have a couple of questions real quick from the audience, and I will get to you in a few seconds, in 30 seconds, 770 and 916. Just hold All on right. for a second. We'll go ahead and finish if you can. This is about the name and yeah, the, but- the migration of the name. Yeah, so... If you have a copy of Volume 2, if you look in the index of names in the back of the book, I used all of the various spellings that that people had, and I respected that. There's J-A-C-Q-U-E-T. There's ending J-A-C-Q-U-E-T. And like I said, most of those people are in the Houston area. And I remember <laughs> interviewing him, and he said he just wanted to change it because he wanted to be different from his family. And then there's Barbara Jacquette. She spells her name with a K, J-A-C-T. She was the former track and field coach at one of the Texas schools. She actually was the head women's coach for the Barcelona Barbara Jacquette. She, her picture is in volume one. But she spells her name with a K, and she told me she spells it that way because she had a falling out with her father, and she just... He wanted to keep the name, but he wanted to be different from him. So everybody has their own excuse as to why they change it. Sometimes it's just a matter of if you are coming from another state or something, and they say, what's your name, and you are you don't know how to read and write your own name, you're at the mercy of these guys. It's like my, uh, my great-grand-uncle was a trade man. And when he migrated from Louisiana to Texas, they said, what's your name? He said, but he said it quick. And they put down C-R-O-Y, so you have a whole bunch of 
Strahan's who are in Houston, Texas, that go by the name Troy, and that's because their grandfather had written him down. But they know they know that they're really playing. Okay, great. So I'm going to put caller 770 on. Just give me a few. You can ask your question. The next would be 916. Then we have one from 214. We have another caller at 4202. So 770, you're next up. Welcome to the program. You can go ahead and pose your question. I'll make your comment. Hello? I guess 770 yeah. take a coffee break or a Super Bowl. Okay, break. no problem. So we go to area code 916. Hold on a second. I'll come back to you, 770. All right, you there? 916, you're on the air. Go ahead and pull Yes, back. okay. Yes, hi. My name is Ron Pipion, and this call is for Russell. Uh, Russell, yep. I met you at a family reunion, the Jacquette family reunion in Los Angeles, and I bought your book. I bought one of your books there, and in the book, yeah, I'm in the book, and my mother's in the book. My grandmother was Lily Mae Jacquette, and you told me, I, I didn't get to follow up with you, but you told me that there was a famous Jacquette that was a football player. Could, yeah, could you tell me who that was and where they played? That was probably Nate Jacquette or Nathaniel Jacquette. He played for Miami Dolphins, Minnesota Vikings, Indianapolis Colts. He played for four teams. He played for about, I think, maybe six years. He was a kickoff return specialist. That was back in the early 2000s, somewhere between 2000 and 2005 he played. He is not playing any longer. I'm sorry, say that again? He is not playing any longer. Is that true? That's true. He re- I saw him at a family reunion. I believe it was, let me see, 2002 to 2007 family reunion in Los Angeles that was hosted by his cousin Beth, and he was there, and he had just retired like a year before that. So I think his last was somewhere around 05, 04, somewhere around there. If you look up his name, Nate Jackett, N-A-T-E, he wait, I believe, was college. Okay. Thank you. I really appreciate your call. And hold on a second. Let me try 770. Hold on one moment. Okay. 770, you on? I'm on the air. Well, welcome. And how are you, Russell? I'm fine. Who are we speaking with? Well, he knows me, but he doesn't know me. I know your mother. Okay. I grew up with your mother in New York, in Manhattan. All right. And uh, I knew your grandmother. And your grandfather. Wow. We go way back. I'm near the same age as your mother, 77. Wow. I I live in Georgia now. Is that right? Yes. I know Russell when he was a little fella. He wouldn't remember me now, though. Well, (laughs) Mm -hmm. how about giving us your name and maybe it'll jog my memory. My name is Zella. Oh, my mom. Zella Hickson from 101st Street in Manhattan. Yes, my mom always mentions. She calls you, I think. (laughs) We speak daily. I knew your dad and everybody, Pat. I'm a long time there. Your mother's my sister. Well, that's great. And then you're doing well, and I want to compliment you. Well, thank you very much, Zella. And I would like to get your book. If you just tell me how, I'm good with the computer. If you just tell me how, I can order it. Well, you could email me. I'll say it, and then I'll spell it. Email is art at msn.com, and that's spell R J A C Q U. DT2, like the number two, at Microsoft Network. Or if you just send me a check, uh, let's see, what is it? Russell? I'm not charging any shipping at all. So. Russell? Yeah. Can you give me that again? I'm not as fast as you. Uh, all right. Okay. My email address is R. Yes. A C. R. Say that again. Your voice is cutting out. Okay. First letter is R. Yes. J. Yes. A. Yes. C. T for Tom or Q for Queen? C as in company or Okay. Talent. All right. And then a Q. Q as in Queen. Right. And then U. Uh-huh. E. 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 T. Okay. Right. I and have it. Di- and what else? You have to put the number two. At, yes. And then it's the at sign. Yes. And then MSN, as in Microsoft Network. Okay. 
dot com. Okay, I got it. Okay, great. And we will have all this information. Thank you for your call. We will have the, his address and website on the uh, link before the end of the show. So, again, you can keep calling in for your questions and press 1 so we indicate that you have a question. Uh, Russell, I guess let's go ahead and move forward with the sons and daughters on from the family. But, again, the uh, his information will be on that website on Blog Talk Radio, Apple Capital Group. It will be there on the link. Talk about the... Th- the difference of the teen kids with the additional two. I think you mentioned at the very beginning there's 13 children from, but also there's two other that maybes. Can you put all of this together? The 13 that we know as an effect and then the additional two, why is that the case? Okay. I'll name the 13 and just a second. Casimir, Belazir, Onazine, Angela, John Baptiste, Alexandra, Jolivet. Charles, Edward, Marie Zoe, Pierre, Marie Josephine, Oscar, Marie Rose, and Phil. Now, those are 13, and the other two children are named Albert Jacquette, born in 1865, and Jacquette, born in 1866. So now, here's the mystery about it. Okay, John Baptiste, Jacquette, who had 13 kids, they were different mothers, right? There, there was at least three different mothers. One wow. was a woman named Victorine Narcisse who bore him a, a child named Oscar Jacquet, right? So the elder, I'm just going to call him the elder Jacquet. The elder Jacquet had a son named Oscar with Victorine Narcisse. Now, this same Victorine Narcisse, right, had two other kids with a name Jean Baptiste. Those are the kids Albert Jacquet, and Jewel, who was born in 1865. Okay, now, that was the that was the three year period that my great grandfather was between his two women that he sired children with. He first sired with a woman named Mapper, who was part we're not sure which tribe. But the first child named John Baptiste Jacquette, we call him Pop, and then Alexandre Jacquette, and they were both born in eighteen sixty one and eighteen sixty four. So Next three years, he's living near this woman named Victorine Narcisse. I'm talking about the younger, you know, the younger. So it's most likely that she has children with the younger rather than the elder. But that's the question. Okay, does she have children with both the father and then later on the son? Or did she have all three children with the elder? So that's why evidence that. That's all I can tell you. You have it in 50 Who is their father? The first person as the father was John Baptiste, and it doesn't say whether it was the elder or the younger one. So it's really not that confusing. It's just, it's just a matter of, uh, of which one was the father, because they really both go back to John Baptiste the cat anyway. Okay. Okay. Well, great. I am also putting the your link on the website so that information is available. So with the explanation of those, those two additional families, if they also want to update the their family themselves, they can send that on to you via your email at rjk2 at msn.com. And if they can send it in to you, then you can begin your update and make it more accurate. Right. Whenever I send someone a book, the, the very last page in the book is a in correction and addition page. Two pages, and I know the writing is small because I had so many additions. I'm trying to stay on just two pages, but sooner or later I'm going to have to go to a third page. But it just says volume two correction and addition info. So it's supposed to have stuff in the book that is in error because I interview people and I only go by what they tell me. Or if they have additional information, like if they were left out or if their parents were left out, they can email me and I can put that in because someday when I finally do a redo of Volume 2, which is also includes Volume 1, it's going to be one big 500-page book, all of the corrections and additional information that I've been collecting and in pictures are going to be, that's probably a year or two away. I have about 70 more copies of Volume 2 
and I want to try to sell the first. I get on to volume, the second edition of volume two. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Are you going to consider in the future an ebook version, or are you just going to stay to just sort of a hard copy or a combination? That, that's not a bad idea because it seems like the ebook revolution is occurring. People are going electronic and paper. So, hey, as far as I'm concerned, the ebook version could be read in a couple of days. <laughs> really, it's pretty much every time people send me corrections and stuff, I input it into the into the text what I wrote previously, and that includes photographs. So it's pretty much all that you go. And the same thing for volume one. Volume one is pretty out of print, so it's that I have to put on a CD. The whole volume one is on a CD. And okay. if they the volume two, if they want to the volume one, the CD is just an extra five dollars. Okay. Okay, so that's a good consideration in the future, I guess, with the volume one. I guess if you post it on Amazon, it would be a lot easier to track. And maybe in the future, once you run out of these copies, maybe the volume two. And also, it's kind of... So moving forward with the kids themselves, the uh, the 15 kids, Yeah. each one has a unique story. I'm looking at the book from, I think, Gilbert to, to Robert Russell to Charles to Edward, Marie, and so forth. Of course, the two... Famous jazz musicians, Russell and Noel. But also, I was hearing, I think, just talking to, I think, Illinois manager, Gilbert, the dad, also was a musician and band leader himself. That's right. Uh, now, all, with the mixture, I think you mentioned Indian at the very close at the very beginning of the interview. So, in Louisiana, they start intermarrying with the Indian population. Or how did that come about? Do you know? Well, my. Grandfather Gilbert, his mother was was part in was Trahan was her name, but her mother was Mary. That's all we know. Her Indian name was Sai, and all I was told was that she picked that name because quote no one could pronounce her, and she was the one that married my great grandfather here. The story that he's the one I mentioned that looked white, but he was black. He was the one that in the White Hospital until they found out he was really good. So the story that passed out to me is that he didn't want to marry a black woman, he didn't want to marry a white woman. So he married an Indian. Wow. And so that's how that side of the family got into us. Now, she must have been dark skinned, that's what I'm guessing. When you look at the children, even though he looked white, the children all dark skinned. There's, there's mm-hmm. no doubt. Pictures of them there in the book, in volume two. They all look dark skinned. So he must have been dark skinned. And if you look at some of the pictures of two Indian tribes, you know, they were very dark skinned. I mean, they were darker than most black. I mean, it's amazing that there's, to me, there's no doubt that there was an African dispute within the Sioux Nation tribe, who knows when, 1500, 1600 because they were very dark. And, and there's a lot of fancy tribal, I can't remember them all, but the people who fought at, what's his name, what's that big battle over in, up in Wyoming? The last thing. Crazy Horse, Crow King, Gall, Red Horse, they were all two, two Indian tribal people. And wow. when you look at the pictures, they were very dark, and it's like there's no... There's no question about it. They had to have some African influence into their genes a couple of centuries. That's the way I look at it. Wow. And that's what they, again, because you can see some of the features of the American Indian and some of the photographs of that time, even today. So if from your side of the family, Gilbert, and to kind of just talk about that, and then we can kind of talk about what you know about the rest of the siblings. Talk about Gilbert. I mean, I know that he re- they he relocated to Houston, Texas. I can't remember offhand. Did he work for the railroad, or he worked in the the Fifth Ward community of Houston? Well, yeah, I can't remember the exact ward. That when they moved to Houston in the 1920s, of course, you mentioned himself. Grandfather Gilbert was a musician, and every time I asked Uncle Illinois what his, what his father, which is my 
my great grandfather, uh, Jean Bassett Jacquet, he also played all the instruments. So this whole thing has passed down to my father's class. And when they moved to Houston, they played at some famous clubs down there. The El Dorado is one yeah, of them. El Dorado, clubs. yeah. And there's a picture of it in the beginning of the first half of the book. When you open up the cover, there's a title, there's a picture of people seated at this table. Their grandfather Gilbert's here with two of the sons, Julius Jackett and Johnny Linton Jackett. And I would like to know if anybody knows who the other people are, because they're all seated at this big banquet-like table. And supposedly, my dad, Russell Jackett, and my uncle, Illinois Jackett, sing music there. So my father started a band called California Playboy, and that's how Illinois Jack had, and by the way, his full name is John Beth Illinois Jack. He got started in my dad's band, and then they went out to California, and they met Lionel Hampton, and he started playing with Lionel Hampton, and the rest is pretty much history about when he played that famous solo on Flying Home, and that was like the greatest that anybody had ever heard. He revolutionized the whole thing. Yeah, it is. Right. Now, Gilbert was for the railroad. And one. the railroad went to Los Angeles, and it also went to New York. And so that's the Illinois. He lived in New York City. So my dad came out there, and the story my mom tells me is that my mom was at a graduation party as she was still a teenager, and I think he was 17, 16 or 17. My 33 or 34-year-old dad crashed the party, met her. They started dating, and, well, to put it in short words, he got her drunk on Man of Seven Pine, and the rest of history, I came out in November of 1950. So on a week after my mom's 18th birthday, so the, my dad, he actually had married a woman in the middle family. And that's in the two, page 300 or something. If anybody has the book, I'll, I'll try to pull it up. Unfortunately, she passed away giving birth to my sister, Jacqueline Jacquette Williams, who lives out in, in Los Angeles, California. So that, and that was in 1944. There's a picture of my dad and his wife on page 82, from volume 2. Lenola Nezia was her name. And uh, she passed away giving birth to my sister. That was they married in nineteen four and they had born a few months later. So my dad after that was quote a playboy because probably because my sister and I we have another brother, his name is Gary Jackhead. He's in New York, I think he's a sister in a church. We haven't heard from him but he likes to contact him. So if anybody knows Gary Jackhead, tell him to call me or Send me yeah, Facebook. Facebook will reach kind of reach a lot of people. Maybe back to your statement about someone who might know today. It would have been easier ten years ago, but I know Skip Lee Feet uh, Fraser out of Houston was uh, well, good friends with Don Roby, who owned the Colorado Club. He might be only one of the last persons that might know at least a lead to know who was in those pictures. But his name is Skip Lee Fraser. And he owns a funeral home. He's a, he was a big time announcer back in the the 50s, 60s, and 70s in Houston. So he might know. And I know the Other Roller Club was owned by Don Roby. He was good friends with Don Roby as well. So um, they, you know if he's related to a Louisa Frazier of the Gaspard family? I'm not, I haven't spoken to Skipper Lee in probably 20 years. But I was trying to find the information for it on to you. Tell us about. Next week, I'm going to do a interview with Carol next Saturday, I think at noon, to focus on Illinois for Black History. But kind of tell us about Russell. I know Mary, I think someone mentioned that she played the piano. Right. Okay. And Russell was a trumpet and drummer? That's right. All of the six kids that were born to Trahan and Gilbert were musicians because Gilbert taught them all music. Johnny went up, he played two drums. If you have volume two, you go to page 275, there's a picture of my dad as the band leader with his company, with the band, the California Playboy. 
There's four saxophone players, two of which are his brothers, Illinois Jack Tech and Julius Jack Tech. They're both playing alto sax. Johnny Litton Jack Tech is the drummer. Now, the two daughters, they're not in this band, but they played the strings. They play violin. I think they both played violin, and that's uh, Isabel Jack Mary. They, they, the whole family, they sang, they danced, they played their strings. Okay. Yeah, I see the picture itself. Yeah, I see it. Circle in 1939 in Houston, but I know where the house was in Houston. Moving forward with the rest of the side of the family, kind of tell us any highlights of, I know there is a few of them still living from this ancestry in Louisiana. I think one person is 95 years old, planning to do an interview sometime this month with them to try to get their story before the last one disappear. But any Thing you can contribute, I think, with the out of each one about where they are today. Let's see. From all of to Edward. And all of the brothers and sisters of my dad, they've all passed on. My, my dad passed away in 1990. So when you go down to like one, two, I would say three generations from that, because I'm in contact with many of the relatives. For example, I just talked. Uh, cousin Juanita, who lives in California, that's at South Sacramento. She's a descendant of Pierre Jack. He's one of the sons and daughters of Jack Jack Jack. She's a descendant of that line, and Pierre's son named Joseph Lionel Jack Jack. I mean, there's so many grand and great grandchildren that are still alive all over this country. Los Angeles, we have a family reunion every year. Cousin Bobette, he hosted it in Culver City. And if you email me, I will put you on the mailing list for when you let me know when it's going to occur. It usually occurs sometime around July, and it's an outdoor thing. We have that. And in Houston, we have family unions once in a while. I'm trying to get them to host them. They, uh, you know, hosting it by the time is a pretty big job. So many Jack Cat families in Houston. Yeah, I talk to them all the time, and I probably see a new cousin two or three times meeting someone new who's a new extended family cousin. We're all related somehow, because, you know, as the tree goes longer into time, there's more people related. Out of this particular group itself, any other, besides, I know one person is 95, anybody else in that age group from who's 95? Plus, that might be so alive that can give a, I guess, another inside view. Sometimes people forget things. As you get older, the past become more livid than it is in the present. Anybody else that's 95 or older that's still living? Yes, I've been told. I've, people have emailed me. I can't remember their names offhand. I know there's someone who's almost 100 who lives in Maryland, for example or Virginia, one, somewhere over there. And next time I come here, I definitely want to interview her. I can't remember her name. I have it written down. I just don't have it with me right now. And there's people who are in Texas in the Jackhead family. They're still living. They're in their late 80s, 90s. Maybe I should compile a, what do you call it, a to-do list, meaning people. I know in a Port Arthur, there's, what's his name? Willie? Yeah, cousin Willie Jackett. Let's see. When was Willie born? His grandfather was Michelle or Mitchell. Jackett. No, I'm sorry. Mitchell? Willie, Willie Paul. He's in 1920. He's still living. So, see, he is, that makes him 84? No, or next, where, yeah, eight, that, that makes him 84. He's still living. He's in Port Arthur, Texas. Willie Paul Jackhead. He's the son of Michelle Mitchell Jackhead, son who's the grandson of John Baptiste Jackhead. He held it. He chose him. If I had time to think about this, I could look at my map here and say who I know for sure is still living. Okay, so he's a chapter. Which one? Chapter. Michelle, yeah. His French name is Michelle, but when they inked it, it became Mitchell. And he's the son of my grand, my great grandfather, John Abbott Jackett. He also had a lot of kids. He had two total. 
And Michelle was the next to the last one born in 1889. And let's see what, I'll pull up the page. Mitchell, he's page, his chapter begins to page 379. Yeah, I'm looking at 379. If you ever want to hear a story of survival, read the story of Willie Paul Jack like this. And he was on a ship called, it was a tank, an oil tanker, the SS Texaco, Oklahoma, which is the tank. And he survived by spending like a certain amount of days. I can't remember how many he was. But he survived that whole thing. And I think it was about 11 or 12 hours he had to like stay afloat when the ship sank. Yes, yeah, quite a story. I mean, that's the whole that's the whole meaning of the book is to write the stories of our people. What they did, uh, the children they had, the challenges they had, the victories they had. Because this should be written down. We should know about our family history. I mean, look, when I wrote this book, if you read the Katie Duck talk about George Bush and John Kerry, they were actually cousins. They were like six or seven cousins, but they know their family history. They could both trace their family. 58th grandfather to Julius Caesar. I mean, why can't we do stuff like that? Where is our history? Lost is stolen, and we need to keep records of it. Whatever we can get, write it down and pass it on. Absolutely. So knowing where we came from or what our roots are, it, it makes us proud. It makes us know that, hey, my great grandfather was this, and I have some of that. And so we want to take all the good stuff from there. On my mother's side, I just found out a year ago that my great grandfather was, was my great grandfather was in Spain, and he came to Ecuador, and that's where my grandfather was born. State. So now I got to go and check out all the records in Spain besides the records in Ecuador. So you know, it, it, once it starts branching out, you have so much more to learn because it needs to be a hobby. I don't collect stamps or dolls or trucks or cars. I collect it needs as something that's real, something that is part of it. Absolutely. We have another caller who has a question at Erica three three seven three three seven. You are on the air. Can you pose a question? Yeah. I just want to remind Russell about Robert Jacket. In Marion, Louisiana, which is about 84, and it will is about the same age. Do you remember him? You said Robert Jackett? Yes, how sir. Old, yeah, how old is he now? He's about 84. What's his middle name? He had three sisters, Hilda and Gertrude, and a mother name was Evelyn, and I think she was American. All right, so there's a, there's a lot of Robert. Do you know his father's name or his grandfather's name? His grandfather's name, I think, was Oscar. Say, repeat that? His grandfather's name was Oscar, I believe. I can't really understand that. Oh, Oscar. Okay. Yes. Let's see, Oscar. And did you say Isabel was his mother's name? Evelyn. Evelyn Jacquet. Oh, Evelyn. Let me see. Well, cause, okay, Evelyn, let's see. I'm looking on my scroll here, but I do No, if I missed that information, you could send it to me by email. There's an Oscar Pierre who was born in 1879, and then there's an Oscar who's in 1887, but I don't see any of their children with that name that you just mentioned. No. My mother was born in 24, so all right, it was probably 18. Well, yeah, if you send me that information, like the birth date, I'll be able to tie them to the family tree. And if I don't already have it in the book, I'll be glad to add it to you. Can you do that? Okay, will do. Great. Thank you. Thank you for, for calling in. Also, I put you back on hold. I guess to, to kind of close out, if 302, if you have a question, I see a question mark there. You can go ahead and press it again, and uh, we'll go ahead and bring you on the air to uh, to close the program out. Again, you're, if a person has any information, they can send you by email to make some corrections, because I'm sure some things are left out or some stories are left out that might be of interest to everyone in the family. And your email address again, Russell, is, is what again? It's rjaquette.com. 
to msn.com. That's spelled R-J-A-C-Q-U-E-T-2, like the number two, MSN, as in MicrosoftNetwork.com. Great. Last couple of things to close out. I know there is a suit that's happening in the Louisiana area regarding the family. Can you talk about that suit? I don't know the details of it. I know something came out last year. The, the family lost some property to some owners, and they closed the loan or something like that, or was unfair. Do you know any details of that particular lawsuit? Yeah, this mostly involves the fifth child born to Jean-Baptiste Chiquette, which is my great-grandfather, Jean-Baptiste Jolivet. When he passed away, he had 40 acres on one plot of land, and then he had another big... He had three plots of land. He proceeded to two children. Unfortunately, in the early 1900s, almost all of those children lost the property in one way or another. They were swindled out of it by having loans that they couldn't pay back, or there was some insane stuff. Now, the, there's been a case that Illinois, before he passed away, he had people looking at, and there's some pretty near, some of the properties we're talking about, that the oil company claimed that they leased the land from the Jack Hat, and they, the Jack Hat has never gotten any royalty, but the oil company claimed they were drilling, but they never got any oil. So that's what he challenged that. A, prove that you never got any oil out of it, and B, pay us more in the land, and because some of them are considering that it's their land, and they, there's no property rights that these oil companies have to that land, and somebody needs to go down to the courthouse with all kinds of real estate things that they have to check in to see whether the title has been perfected and all that stuff. I'm no real estate agent, but I do know that there's some things that have to be looked at to be sure that whoever owns that land has gotten it legally from the jack, whether it's 100 years ago or 80 years ago. So that's what's being contested in court as to who really owns that land and if there's royalties that are owned to some of the jack cat families. Wow. So how can they contact the person if they have a question about to support it or to sign something to so they can go for it? Will they contact Willie or they contact someone else? Yeah, Willie Paul Jacquette, the one I mentioned in Lake, no, not Lake Charles, Port Arthur. Port, Port Arthur? Yeah, he's the one. There, there are at least two families working on it. He's working on it there, and I think there's another family in Houston who's working for and I can't, I don't know any other details except that Willie Paul is the one that I know is working on it, but he's working on it for the that family from the kids he had. Anybody else who has property, you know, from the other brothers, I wouldn't know anything about that. What I can tell you, that this is mostly in volume one, actually, is that when when slavery ended, there were five brothers who managed together and each bought 40 acres of land. Now, that 40 acres is, is no, that's not a figure, is it? But they paid for it. They paid money for it. And when they passed away, they bequeathed it to their children. And the five brothers were at Edward Jack. Now, Joe was my great father. And those other five brothers who had property, I have no idea what happened to their property. A lot of it's in books. One and book two. If, if I found something out about the property they own, it's in the book. So if anybody wants to challenge property rights of what their great grandparents own, they would have to read one or book two about about that. And I would start off with one whole pretty one is lost. Page seventy one, seventy two, seventy three. That that chapter. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Willie Paul is taking care or looking into the matter, he put it that way. He's looking into the matter of the belief that Jolivet Jacquette owns that he bequeathed to his children. The other families, I don't really know anything about. Okay, and I did have an email from uh, Tommy Jacquet, Jarman, J-A-R-M-A-N, and her email or his email is J as in Jack, T as in Tom, J as in Jack, A as in Apple, R as in Robert, M as in Mom, 
O as an Oscar, E as an Nancy, sbcglobal.net. Again, for Tom and Adrian K. Jarman, again, that is J as in Jack, T as in Tom, J as in Jack, A as in Apple, R as in Robert, M as in Mary, O as in Oscar, E as in Nancy, sbcglobal.net. That's from the email I received last summer. To close out the program, anything else you want to close with, Russell? No, I would just say, oh, yes, I have a list. If anyone has any, the oldest pictures they have in their inventory of these pictures, like from like 100 years ago or older than that, if they could email me, I would love to have them for the book. Because we have a lot of pictures of people, like recent, but the older generation, I hardly have any pictures of, I don't have any pictures of the third season. 15 kids of Jean Baptiste that can. And I do have some pictures of their children, but no really old pictures. But we love old pictures. We have the oldest picture like 80, 100, 120 years ago. Please send them. Okay. We have another question from a caller, Eric 832. And 337, I'll put you back on the air in a few seconds to answer your question. Okay. Eric, Eric 832. And we have your question. Welcome to the program. Hey, how's it going? My name is uh, Roger Kidd. I'm from Port Arthur. My father was J.P. Jacket, and his parents were Lena and Walter. I want to know if you guys had any information on them, on Lena and Walter. Walter Jacket was father. Well, do you know the birthday of Walter? Because I think I know who you're talking about. But let me see. Walter. I don't know Larry. Walter's birth. I don't know Walter's birthday, but I know that. Uh, JP, I want to say he was either the first or second cousin to your dad in Illinois. Well, I'm I not think mistaken. it's Joseph Walter who, so let me read this and you tell me if this rings a bell. Joseph Walter, 3rd of November, 1886, he died in July of 1965. He married Lena. Is that him? Yeah, that sounds about right because he was. I was born yeah. in 75, and I think he both died like maybe 10 to 15 years before I was born. Yeah, he married Sunette because you mentioned he married Nina. That Sunette, Sunette rings a bell. Sunette, because she was, I want to say her sister was Ida and Ada and Louise. How about Mabel, Priscilla, Mercedes, Bertha, Abdullah, you, Bernice, Gil, Priscilla, Mariah, Wesley, Joseph Wallace. Bernice that, rings a bell. Yeah, Joseph Wallace was the first. Of about a dozen kids born to East Jacket and Victor Southland. Their mother was Maristine Bork, and their father was John F. Jacket, who migrated. And you you kind of breaking up. So, so they originate from Jalavan as well? Yes, that's right. So, it would be, I guess, my dad's what, great grandfather, great great grandfather? Well, let's see. Your name is Roger. Your dad was J.P. Jacket, and your My name grandpa- is Brian. Okay. Did you say your father was Roger? No, my father's name was Joseph Patrick, but they called him J.P. Okay, Joseph Patrick. Well, let me see if he, he has to be in college because your 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 grandparent. Let me see. Pop Peace. He was. He's definitely Pop Peace. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. heard of him. He's the first born of Joseph Jacket. Okay, the first book. Oh, okay. Well, I appreciate what y'all are doing, man. And thanks for the time for answering my questions, man. Great. Thank you for on the air. We're going to go back to 337 real quick. We have about, about five minutes left. Welcome to the air, 337. Erica, you had another question, sir? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No problem. We'll put you on hold. Again, thank everybody for joining in on the program. And we will send some information. I guess what we really need is a Facebook page so we can kind of tie everybody together and kind of keep the communication out. Is that some consideration, Russell, of building a Facebook page and connecting all the JKs together? And as they get information in, at least you can kind of keep amends on who's part of who's and what family and tying everything together. I do have a Facebook page. I didn't realize I had it until someone <laughs> emailed me and said, hey, you have a Facebook page. You haven't done anything in years. But it is, if you look up Russell Jacket hyphen A-C-E-A, I'm there. But I would not know how to set up what you're talking about. If you give me some clues, I might be able to do that. Oh, no problem. We can uh, help you with that. And it'd be easier to communicate across 
the states and maybe people can also upload the pictures a lot quicker because a lot of almost a billion people is on Facebook today and I saw I contact a lot of people in order to join the show today. So maybe right. you and I can work on that together and uh, people can submit via the email. They can just look online to find this page and maybe we can keep everything there as well as with pictures and so forth. Again, I really thank you for your time. I thank you come out to program, Russell. Great book, great stories. And then uh, we appreciate you doing all the work for it. I know it is a lot of work. Work always in progress and we're never in. Again, if they can contact you, they can contact you via your website. And uh, I will put that on the Blog Talk Radio page for us. I'll also put your email there so they can contact you. And again, it's R, the letter R, JK, number two, at msn.com. Anybody else want to add anything before we sign off? Anything, Russell? Oh, you're talking to me. No, yeah. thanks a lot, and happy Super Bowl Sunday, everyone. I know you guys. Super Bowl get- Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> Super, people did ask why Super Bowl Sunday. I said, well, sometimes you just have to do things when you can to fit things in. Again, this will always be out. You can download this on iTunes. Just type it in, JK Family, under the podcast, and this will be there forever. So it's a stamp of, of history on this particular day. Also a blog feed, and also is readily available on the on the Internet through Google and other places. Again, thank you, Russell, for joining the broadcast. We had, it looked like, 97 listeners. Believe it or not, nobody made a comment in the chat room, but we appreciate the 97 people who's uh, called in to listen to the program, and we wish you have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Russell, thank you for your time. Thanks a, God. Thanks a lot, and uh, glory to God. Glory to God. Again, this is Apple Capital Group, Block Talk Radio. Appreciate you joining the program on this Sunday afternoon, Super Bowl Sunday, 2012. Again, this episode can be downloaded in iTunes, also on Block Talk Radio on the Apple Capital Group webpage. Well, have a great Super Bowl Sunday. Russell, have a great day. And everyone right. else, thank it's you. Good. Have a good evening. This has been another production of Apple Capital Group, Financing Your Business Show. Have a great Sunday.